Hello there, you beautiful people. My name is Willow, and welcome back to Supreme Commander Forge Alliance Forever for some tippy-top, high-level ladder action played out on Sentence Clutch Faf version. Before we get into introducing our players, I would like to direct you to the buttons down below. There is the like, dislike, uh, subscribe, bell, and now super thanks. So if you are feeling relatively charitable today, you can give me a thanks. It's a donation uh, kind of thing. has a weird name, but still. And, uh, of course, leave a comment down below and tell me what you want to see in upcoming casts. Now, really quick, I need to turn on, uh, I need to turn on music because I was streaming and it was turned off. And let's get into introducing our players, starting with the blue Cybran in the top right-hand corner. He's going first and second land, and his name is White Horse. And then moving on to his southern opponent, we have a Red Seraphim Worst Faction going first land and second land with a couple of mexes in between uh, by the name of Laze Fairy, and he is rocking this southern side of Seton's Clutch. It's a map that we all know and love, 15,318 reclaim in the beginning, a ton of it situated right here on the causeway. Of by a ton of it, I mean 13,000 of the 15,000. And then we have a little bit of pockets behind the players, and we're going to see how these players manage this colossal map usually played as a 4v4 in the 1v1 format. So, actually, I lied. It was air. It was his first land and then air for White Horse. Going to have to see if that has any meaningful effect on this game. No early air factory yet for Laze Fairy. Uh, I think he might want to be walking to the middle a little bit sooner as White Horse is definitely going to get there first. And we're going to have to just see how these players get on with this match. It's going to be a bit of a longer one in, in store for us today. And it's going to be a banger nonetheless. Setton's Clutch, such a classic, classic map. Uh, we don't quite have the, uh, the load for that, but... We will see how these players get on. It's going to take a little bit before we get into some heavy action, but I'm sure it's going to come soon. Lots of factories queued up for White Horse. Of course, we need to talk about the rating of these players. One is 1,902, and the other one is 1,806. So these two players both very high on the 1v1 ladder and will be playing it out very, very effectively. We'll be surprised if we see anything less than the most APM taxing strategies. These players are going to do drops. They're going to do crazy things. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like one player wins each naval, uh, naval pond. And, of course, they're going to have to manage this colossal map, as I was mentioning, all by their lonesome T1 bomber out from White Horse. So he did have strategies for that early air factory. Going to have to see how they pan out. In the center, there's going to be a tank and a scout combo running into that commander. I believe the commander is just going to deal with that quite easily on his own. Yep, that tank, not long for this world. Might be able to get away, but definitely won't be getting any kind of harassment damage. Zeus deciding to stop and do a little bit of a of an air show for us, and now is going to turn around and start making its way towards, I would imagine, the base, but maybe not. He's kind of just keeping it in the wings here, in the, in the flanks, just waiting for the, I guess, opportune moment to really use this bomber. T1 Engineer right here building a ma uh, mass extractor. If it gets sniped off, it will be huge because it will stop the building of that mass extractor. Doesn't manage it. There are a few engineers in the back doing some reclaim. We have uh, more land factories going up for the Red Seraphim Laze Ferry and an air factory going up in the background. Really wondering what his plan is with this bomber. Doesn't seem to have a uh, strong grasp on where he wants to use it. We'll go ahead and do this so we can see the mini-map and see what's going on here. Bit of fighting going on. A T1PD about to finish up in the middle for White Horse as the bomber manages to drop its first payload onto an engineer. Picks up its first little set of kills and uh, is going to be looking for more damage to deal. It's been very slow. It's not been uh, super prioritized in terms of getting getting kills onto engineers looking for more expanding engineers i would guess 
but unable to find them and now a interceptor out onto the field bomber gonna come in drop a bomb onto the air factory not quite gonna get anything done with that and the mobile aa gonna take it down so that's the end of the bomber plays this t1pd gonna afford whitehorse a few more seconds to try and get more reclaim get the lion's share of it for himself Whereas Laze Fairy showing up, no upgrades on the comm, but is getting a move command. Uh, more and more uh, Zooey's showing up to kind of shut down this T1PD play. Not a lot of the reclaim has been grabbed up by White Horse. Maybe he's waiting for some engineers to show up. He has a lot of land factories finished up now, but more land factories seemingly producing for Laze Fairy as he's managed to get a much larger land army accrued. White Horse slightly ahead economically as his expansion seemingly going a little bit smoother, a little bit faster. Although with that faster expansion, seems as though he was not quite able to get the same number of land units on the field. Over here in the center, Laze Fairy deciding to blap into the back of this Cybern Com. Going to be very, very upset with that. I'm sure is White Horse does need to be careful. Does come uh, does have that little bit of a health disadvantage with the Cybern, but still a decent commander here in the early game to have, as all four of them are, and the. Mantis over here going to be getting a decent amount of little DPS spammed onto Laze Fairy as he was firing at the comm and not the Mantis. Doesn't manage to pick up any of the Mantis as a kill. The Salem's now being reclaimed by White Horse. These Salem's each worth nearly a thousand mass, so going to be very huge. More reclaim in total so far for White Horse. White Horse doing quite a good job for himself. And, of course, another T1 bomber out onto the field for White Horse. Most likely not going to achieve too terribly much. As, uh, he's not really got the, um... He's not really got the, the, uh, the, the interceptors to protect this. Although the interceptors for Laissez Ferry coming to the middle, White Horse is going to be forced into the water as he just doesn't have enough tanks to deal with this giant thumb pressure coming out. He does have a ton of factories going up, and he's going to be able to get a lot of units out. I don't think we should be too worried about an early ejection or his base getting rolled over, but it's going to be a little bit difficult for him to stay in this area. He's down to half HP, down to 4,700, and going down a little bit lower. Is continuing to try and pick up some reclaim, up to 10 kills. Maybe he could get a rank of veterancy, but he's going to be in a bit of a difficult situation. Could be under threat of dying very, very early on. Only seven minutes in, and he's already under threat of a ejection this early into the game. Dropping into the red, down to 2,000 HP and falling. All those thumb shots going to do a lot of damage very quickly. Now there are Zooey's. He needs to micro against that and probably just needs to abandon this middle area. 8,000 reclaim to be picked up here, and it seems as though Laze Fairy going to be able to get the lion's share of that as he has now secured himself a strong position. Although a ton of Mantis now showing up onto the field for White Horse. White Horse going to try and build up a naval factory right here next to the coastline. If he does manage to get that finished up, he could build a couple of frigates and try and do some shore bombardment. Not that it's particularly effective, but maybe reinforcing units will have a bit harder time as Laze Ferry continues to press forward using the comm and its beefy HP, along with that decent gun, 100 damage each time it fires going into these Mantis and gonna be able to use that to great effect although there's enough mantis here to make him think twice and he's running out of thumbs in a relatively quick succession t1 engineer very brave on an attack move out of that factory is gonna be able to pay itself off already reclaimed its own cost so i'm sure uh this could be an effective strategy does need to try and take some more territory this this reclaim field is going to become very important very soon if White Horse has access to Overcharge, could get some juicy pop out of the water and fire at the Thoms. Uh, does not seem to have access to Overcharge as of yet. Would love to see a Energy Swords thrown up for either of these players, as I haven't seen much Overcharging happening on either side. Trying to get that first rank of Veterancy is White Horse with this comm. If he manages to pick that up, he will be pretty healthy once again. Not as healthy as Laze Fairy, but still in a good position. As we zoom out and look across the map, we can see the expansion efforts for both sides. The T1 Bombers uh, have done their toll. I think they've killed off enough expanding engineers to be worth it. Uh, as Laze Fairy and White Horse, both around 70 mass a second, uh, does seem as though maybe over here there was a engineer expanding that kind of failed in its job. Uh, nope, it just kind of stopped expanding at a certain point.
and these players are going to be soaking up the mass extractors as quickly as possible. First naval factory out and first frigate about to finish up for White Horse. As in the center, Laze Ferry continuing to fight it out with the comm and all the units. Uh, the forward land factory over here for White Horse proving invaluable as these attack command uh, engineers managing to give him a little bit of an economic boon. Able to suck up the reclaim from all these early game fights. The frigate trying to be used to some effect uh, at killing off some of these tanks. Now going to be placed over here as close to the shore as he can get it does need to make sure he does not allow it to get hit by Zui shots. Zui's quite good at dealing with uh, with frigates when they're unmicroed. And the point defense over here in the front gonna make this a bit harder of a position to push for White Horse. Although he's forcing the comm back, forcing the comm away, and giving himself access to the lion's share of the reclaim. 4,000 just right here, and he has a bunch of engineers already out on the field starting to reclaim the factory, the naval factory, with its enha enhanced build power, 20... Oh, wait, no, it has the same build power. Uh, is going to be giving him another stream of engineers to start sucking up this reclaim, and we can see that difference start to formulate here as he's nearly 4 mass, uh, 4,000 mass reclaim ahead, and in overall mass generation, he is ahead by uh, 5,000, which could show itself as an advantage very early on. He's continuing to expand, has a transport out now with some engineers on it. Would like to see a bit of an expansion to these side islands. They're very difficult to, uh, to, to remove from somebody's control once they're held. And it does seem as though this one is going to be dropping this far right island. And we don't have a transport yet out uh, for Laze Ferry, but we have T2 Air. So we could see something like gunships or maybe even some kind of, uh, some, some kind of, bomber harass with Nathas. A large land force out from Laze Ferry starting to push in towards the main base of White Horse. The reinforcing unit's going to be trying to make this work, uh, make a defense happen. He's been, of course, getting a lot of that reclaim, and Laze Ferry wants to put an end to that. The T1PD racking up nearly a rank of veterans. He may even grab one if, they, if another unit pushes just a little bit too far forward. And with that rank of veterans, he will start uh, healing up HP. Although, it does seem that this uh, this PD is not long for this world as artillery shells fly in. Only one more artillery shell to take that out. So, a dicey position for that T1 static defensive option. And the expansion continues. These players neck and neck economically. White Horse slightly ahead, as to is to be expected whenever you get the lion's share of the reclaim. T2 land finished up for White Horse. The the, higher, the heavier focus on air for Laze Ferry, though, could produce a very interesting dynamic, whereas T2 land versus T2 air, uh, both of which very good options, although I think on a map this large, the air might be a little bit better. Only two air factories currently finished up for White Horse, whereas we have uh, three for Laze Ferry, including that T2 air factory. And both sides kind of giving each other a reprieve, kind of slowing everything down a little bit. Reclaim starting to even up as a bunch of engineers for Laze Ferry managing to get to this causeway and get to this reclaim field and start sucking up the mass that that entails. Where is the commander of White Horse deciding not to uh, use it in combat quite as heavily as Laze Ferry? So Laze Ferry sitting on one vet, almost two, whereas. White Horse yet to pick up his first rank of veterancy on the comm. Rank of veterancy finished up for that point defense, getting one health a second. A slow but sure kind of uh, increase in HP. Going to be able to heal up over a very long period of time. Probably not going to be too significant, but is nice to have. As Medusa en masse trying to harass back the forces of Laze Ferry. And we have our first naval play coming out from Laze Ferry. We set up three naval factories down here in the southern pond and is trying to exert control over this area. A T1 transport going for the western island now for White Horse. He does, of course, have naval control over here. It's only one frigate, but that's more than you need. 
some naval factories now keyed up for laissez Ferry, and navy is where this map is generally decided so gonna have to see how these players transition from the land phase of the game into the naval phase of the game another frigate gonna come out deal with these zooies that are trying to deal with the naval factory out from white horse not seeing any kind of pressure coming out from that t2 uh air hq haven't seen a gunship or anything for harass and overall economies white horse ahead by about uh 20 to 30 mass income at any given second which is quite significant uh, at this stage of the game. He's very quickly uh, widening the gap over of total mass generation. As these players continue to duke it out, beat each other in the face with various types of units. These T2 units coming onto the field, proving their superiority. The Rhino, a very adept combatant, especially when the land is as flat as Settens tends to be. Not very much land mass for those low-mounted laser weapons to get interrupted by. Not all these tiny hills or uh, deflations in the ground to mess up the targeting on those. As we reach into the mid-game, 15 minutes elapsed, no one... Having a strong grasp on winning the game just as of yet. As frigates continue to fight their way across the causeway for uh, for White Horse. White Horse also with a large push. Lots of Mantis firing into that PD. PD does go down. And uh, the large force out from White Horse with those Rhinos going to be able to get some purchase here going to be able to push back might even be able to get out uh get rid of these forward land facilities if he's able to do that we'll give him a little bit of a dominant streak here in the middle of the map artillery shots flying in both directions frigates on both sides of the causeway firing into these t1 tanks and these land factories not long for the world as ilshavas show up onto the scene to try and disrupt this attack coming out from White Horse. Over here to the east, Naval Factory thrown up for White Horse is going to be starting production of frigates, but a couple of frigates showing up from Laze Ferry to shut that down. Both islands handing, uh, being handed over to White Horse, and now he's over 50 mass a second ahead and going to be able to create an economic advantage for himself and possibly create a very dangerous situation for Laze Ferry, who's having a bit harder of a time uh, with the entire economic scaling, although he's done very well with the unit production and has always had enough units to uh, push back White Horse and his overwhelming economy. as we settle in for a long and extended engagement here on the causeway. Units constantly being thrown at each other and reclaim constantly being grabbed up by whichever side has momentary control of the causeway. And constantly see this forward naval factory and this forward land factory producing engineers intermittently. Whenever they're not under direct threat of death, they will be producing engineers. That T1 PD managing to get all the way up to 300 HP from the 96 it was sitting at beforehand. And uh, gonna be able to pick off another kill and probably gonna go up to another rank of veterancy here soon. Up to 440 HP with that second rank of veterancy and 2 HP a second. Very cost effective point defense here, killing off over a thousand mass worth of, da uh, worth of units. As these, the unit ball for White Horse starts to conglomerate, starts to try and push back these very strong mid-game units, the Ilshavas, as a strap bomber out for Laze Ferry comes in, kills off a T2 Pigeon, which is going to put White Horse into a very difficult power situation, although I think White Horse will be able to deal with it. The Interceptor's trying to catch up to only a small group of Interceptors, but they do catch up as the strap bomber stops. And I think the Strap Bomber's going to go down. Gonna leave a little bit of reclaim right here. 
going to be difficult for Whitehorse to grab it as he does not have a naval presence over here. And his cruisers starting to come up, come out a very big threat to Whitehorse's base. He just doesn't have anything in the southern pond to help out, and he doesn't really have the same recourse on the other side. Cannot produce those oh so valuable missile launching cruisers. Maybe if he could find a way to capture an engineer, he could get some kind of equivalent damage on the other side. Seems as though Laissez Ferry going to be trying to get himself into the naval game on this northern side. Probably slated for doom as uh, the frigate count in this northern sea is pretty high and once Whitehorse realizes this is happening he's going to redirect all of his frigates to try and assist with this situation. The cruiser coming in, there's already a TMD out onto the field. This could be reclaimed, might help out Whitehorse a little bit. And uh, more TMD is going to have to be spammed up as I would imagine more and more cruisers are going to come onto the field and start trying to siege this down. This area over here almost entirely going to be forfeit as Laze Ferry going to be able to strike a strong economic blow. Although the question is how much damage does he need to get done? He is almost 100 mass a second behind his peer and opposition. It's going to be very difficult for uh, somebody who is 100 mass a second down at 20 minutes to just deal with the sheer number of units that White Horse is very soon going to be able to produce. Uh, T3 air, not a priority for, for White Horse, despite the early strat bomber not really worried about the possibility of Laissez Ferry getting a strong advantage in the air and laissez Ferry managing to get a decent tech advantage in every situation except for of course ground as in the middle this constant fight on the causeway continues medusa getting great value as they're stunning up these ilshivas constantly medusa second only to the chrono as far as stunning these units and gaining a little bit more combat effectiveness for all of your other units as the Reclaim Wars continue, Reclaim relatively even, but White Horse up by 5,000 just in almost every metric economically, uh, White Horse ahead, whereas Laissez Ferry ahead tech-wise in, in units. He's, he's not quite got the same economy behind him, but he just has so much value in these quality units, the Ilshivas, the, uh, the Ithal Ithaluas uh, being used. He also has some Yenzines trying to help solidify his naval presence in this northern pond, trying to get himself back into the game using that deadly, deadly hover spam to shut down the frigates out from White Horse. White Horse might want to consider going T2 in the Navy on this northern pond, as I think winning via land is just not in his wheelhouse really needs to tech up his uh, his unit production. He has the economy for it. Just gotta see how he plans to use it. His main base luckily not taking too much damage as he's managed to get up just enough TMD to kind of just stop the light cruiser harass going on right now. The hero point defense probably not gonna live very long as the cruisers once they target it will uh very much so kill off the hero with 950 HP as these units in the middle kind of uh, feels like the overall unit count for Laissez Ferry is thinning out the Medusa taking their toll constant micro required on these units constantly have to keep them moving otherwise the Medusa very quickly deal with this and of course Medusa an already natural counter to these PD that have been spammed up by Laissez Ferry Laissez Ferry has gone T3 land and is now producing Othams to try and assist himself in the middle. But he is now nearing 150 mass generation behind his opponent. Laissez Ferry not quite uh, adept as his op opposition at the economy side of sentence, but is definitely showing his, uh, his true colors here as he's playing the land game pretty well. He's gotten so much cost effectiveness out of all these units. Both players at a nearly, if not, uh, 1.0 mass efficiency for kill to loss ratio. But as we're nearing 50,000, just surpassed 50,000 total mass generation ahead for White Horse, you gotta be asking yourself, where is it all going? He does have a lot of torpedo bombers, but 
I think he's having trouble getting a targeting solution onto these cruisers, so you can't just shift G and get rid of them as easily as he may have wanted to. He is slowly gaining the supremacy on the land front, going T3 land now. I'm guessing that is a response to the sight of Othams who showed up in the middle. And this large reclaim field almost assuredly going to be going to the hands of our blue Cybran, beating down on the Seraphim as the Seraphim deserve to be beaten on. The naval engagement's not going particularly well for Laissez-Faire, and now he just seems to be behind in both navies. No naval presence on the eastern side and on the northern side. Northwestern side just does not seem to have anything. His entire hopes is currently set in this land battle. can't remember, do Medusa stun T3 units? If we don't see it, then answers in the comments. I believe they stun. T3 units, do they not? I don't know why they wouldn't. Every uh, every other land unit seems to get stunned up. The Otham's doing quite well at not getting hit, though. As over here to the east, the cruiser fire mounting. We're up to three cruisers and a fourth coming in momentarily. The Hero PD going down momentarily, each one of these missiles dealing horrible, horrible damage, and only three of them taken to kill off that bastion of defense that has been White Horse's pride and joy here in the middle. I'm sure he didn't even notice that it got two ranks of atrancy. He didn't care, but I care, okay? I care. I'm here for the PD positivity movement after my player positivity movement. I'm just, everything's positive from blood work to my mentality at this point. <laughs> uh, surprisingly, not all of the mass extractors over here focus down yet. It seems as though Laissez Fairy putting a lot of value in the idea of breaking this TMD hold, but White Horse sitting on 15 TMD and Cybern being the best at the, at the job going to make it very difficult even for the best missile cruisers in the game, the Seraphim missile cruisers, to punch through this. Going to need a lot more than four or five of them. Going to need 30 or 40, most likely. And I don't know if he's willing to place that investment into this Southern Navy. The mass generation now 170 behind for Laze Ferry, and he's by no means poor. 200 mass a second, very significant as he's getting huge value. And it doesn't seem that these Otham's getting stunned up by the Medusa, but huge value out of this T3 land force with assisting Elshivas and T3 mobile shields. Able to get a ton of cost effectiveness here as he mows down rhinos in droves along with Medusa. Wouldn't be surprised to see multiple Othams pick up a rank of veterancy. That Otham near death picks up a rank of veterancy. And that's going to skyrocket Laissez Ferry's efficiency with its units. Bricks now showing up on the field. Bricks going to be strong opposition to the Otham spam out from Laissez Ferry. But in this northern pond, T2 Navy now achieved in the northern pond for White uh, for Laissez Ferry, and White Horse just lacking in the water and now the Yinzians able to show up and help the land forces hover units oh so effective across land and sea uh, able to assist where they are needed go where they must I'm a strong proponent for those T2 hover units being used liberally I hope that sanctuary and I'm not sure if this is the case despite being on their team and being able to see everything Hoping that Sanctuary has a uh, kind of option for some of the factions to have a decently strong hover force uh, at T3. As in Fef, you only really get that strong hover force at T2. Can't really scale it into the late game, can't make it your win condition. As these cruisers eat away at the available territory for White Horse, now he needs T2 
TMD at any position that he wishes to hold. And he's looking very light on the land forces. This entirely, this crazily strong economy not meaning anything when he has a 0.77 kill to loss ratio mass wise. Having a lot of troubles with the efficiencies of his units and not quite able to throw together anything of substance. He is going to start using torpedo bombers in this northern pond to try and equalize his disadvantage. No real cruisers over here and with this a massive interceptor force there are ASF on the field for White Horse and he does have T3 air of course uh, for White Horse but Laissez Ferry has ASF on the field a couple mixed in for White Horse I think these interceptors might be enough to turn the tide so many of them and of course every shot that goes to an interceptor and not an ASF on this western side is going to be huge for the air fight overall and the unmicroed ASF gonna die to interceptors and droves interceptor is still quite good at dealing with ASF if they don't have to deal with the overwhelming maneuverability advantage that the ASF have and that's just gonna result in this northern pond being saved a little bit for laissez Ferry, that frigate very dead Is Laissez Ferry going to be able to use torpedo bombers to hold on to this northern pond? And he's now got up T2 Navy. The cruiser count mounting up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nope, just 8. I, I counted wrong. I think I counted the destroyer. Uh, just 8 cruisers. Still not able to punch through the main uh, TMD line, but... Starting to focus yet again over a little bit of damage onto these mass extractors over here. Bricks trying to valiantly hold the line against this land force, which has kind of petered out in its effectiveness. As mass brick, wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight factories, some with heavy assistance building bricks. That's going to be a very difficult force to deal with, with the intermittent deceiver in this force means that ranged engagement's going to go poorly for laissez Ferry. Starting to get into that range where you need sniper bots and possibly constant T1 air, uh, air scouts flying over your opposition. Although the cruisers about to start getting shots in onto the bricks is going to be painful, no doubt, for White Horse. Anything spicy going up in the bases nothing that I can see air grids being thrown together economies being built up 200 mass a second ahead for white horse we're starting in that range of standoff tactics and experimentals he's spending the mass majority of his mass it would seem on these t3 units though and heavy assistance on building t2 units in the northern pond the cruiser count Stagnating as well as a ferry not deeming it worthy to build more cruisers whenever he's struggling to deal with the existing TMD and more can always be built up and will be built up. Bricks now pushing forward as well as the Navy. A breakout attempt now from White Horse as he feels he has enough units to pressure on both the water and the land, both sea and land forces trying to push back Laissez Ferry, who's managed to get quite the reclaim. Uh, he was behind earlier, get quite the reclaim boon from simply winning that fight and all of that fighting earlier, you can see it's been reclaimed. Both of these players very aware of how important that mechanic is and both of them abusing it to the absolute limit that they can. The side island over here going down now for White Horse, as this side island also seemingly has taken a little bit of damage. Seems as though Laissez Ferry trying to get any value out of these cruisers he can. A massive amount of torpedo bombers, 68, that is more than enough to deal with these nine cruisers with a shift G. Uh, that is going to be a dangerous proposition for Laissez Ferry as he 
desperately tries to claw his way into some kind of sustained damage on his opponent. Stealth finishing up for White Horse. I think that's the first comm upgrade in the entire game. 33 minutes in, and we get stealth on the Cybern comm, which is sitting in the pond back here. The comm of Laze Ferry deciding to take the Southern Ocean as his home. And Myrmidon, or Mermaids, uh, mixed with Sirens. Don't know why I said Myrmidon. That's like the T3 anti air for the Cybern. Uh, being used to great effect as the cost efficiency of White Horse still staying around that 1.0 mark. Still able, or back up to the 1.0 mark where earlier he was at 0.77. And getting more and more damage done with this naval force. A lot more assistance going on to some naval factories back here in the back. Looks like he's going to focus a little bit more on getting some T2 forces out. Destroyers coming onto the scene as before it was mermaids and cruisers. In the middle, large Autumn Force versus large Brick Force, but it seems as though White Horse has the advantage in overall numbers now. And since we're both at T3, numbers are the only thing that matters. Needs to keep them moving. The cruiser is going to be a large threat to this land force if it sits, if it sits still. Large naval engagement now culminating between these two players in the Northern Pond. I think that the lion's share of the losses are going over onto the side of White Horse. Is in the middle, these cruisers getting dangerously close to getting huge effectiveness on this land force. The longer the land force sits still, the more likely these cruiser shots will land. It only takes a couple of volleys to destroy a large swath of that brick force. This destroyer is being pumped out relatively quickly. More factories going T2 for White Horse. Going to have a lot of destroyers on the field very soon. And I don't think we have quite the same commitment to Navy in the Northern Pond for Laze Ferry, so... Could be huge, along with the torpedo bombers. The Brick Force starting to push back this uh, force from Laze Ferry. Could be dangerous, although the reinforcing unit's going to have a bit of str struggles catching up to this force of bricks. Needs to be careful, his opponent's constantly shoving out more Othams off the assembly line. Sorry about that, I had to blow my nose. Still dealing with those allergies, still kicking my ass, but May will be the month of mini casts for you all, along with other videos. So we will suffer together <laughs> through many a games as White Horse and Laze Ferry, yet again, still no closer to finding the winner of this game. Although White Horse has had such an economic advantage, he has a paragon or a maver's worth of mass generation total over his opponent. He's not able to find enough purchase to make it work. Maybe he's wasting mass. I don't think he is, though. Really just struggling to use this economy as a cudgel, as Laze Ferry has been playing a relatively effective game. The large destroyer force, this is a bit deceiving. Looks as though White Horse is going to lose this, but I think he has the advantage. As long as he stands and fights and keeps his destroyers firing, he has the advantage here. There's so many destroyers in this force versus just one of his opponents. The destroyers in the back line going to be dealing more attritional damage as they are not yet being fired upon. Going to be a costly victory, but a victory nonetheless. And we might want to see transports get out here for reclaiming this naval fight. Bricks being forced back mostly by cruiser fire, I feel. 
as laissez-faire starting to crumble in that northern pond as I was talking about. The mass destroyer coming out from White Horse is going to be huge. Does laissez-faire have anything in the works? He has a chicken on the way, our first experimental of the game. Going to be huge here. As bricks are going to be dying in droves as these cruiser shots are getting in. That's a very painful, painful loss. And the reclaim may not even be that good as the cruiser fire is going to continue to fire at the same spots. Meaning those wrecks are going to lose a lot of their value. As more cruiser fire uh, hits the retreating bricks. 13,000 reclaim worth of bricks and even more than that. Ling uh, have died there. These cruisers proving invaluable. All of them getting multiple ranks of veterancy it seems. Or at least one. Air response coming out from White Horse due to the light torpedo bomber harass coming out from Laissez Ferry. White Horse still mixing in ridiculous amounts of interceptors, and I think he just has the ASF advantage. So if an air fight breaks out, White Horse just going to win, and that's a very bad air fight now for Laze Ferry, who's just not been able to find any effectiveness with his Air Force this game. Seems as though White Horse has found a winning strategy, at least thus, at least thus far. He's using bricks to hold the middle. And air supremacy and mixed with tons and tons of destroyers to win this northern pond. We'll start being able to push in and get some real damage done onto the economy of his opponent who's already behind him by 300 mats a second. Although, Laze Ferry seeming to find purchase here in the middle, possibly time to be getting out a lot of uh, gunships for White Horse as the chicken completes and Laze Ferry has forced White Horse back to his basically his main base. Gunther's going to be thrown up on the shore along with some stealth generators to try and help him. Gunther is going to be able to make, be made uh, cost effective. A lot of those cruisers, though, going down to mass torpedo bomber. I kind of missed some of it, but these cruisers that have been plaguing White Horse for so long going to be a thing of the past momentarily as he pushes in with the large destroyer force. All of these Salem's coming into the bay of the northern side. There's just not enough naval forces here to really hold out for Laissez Ferry. Naval micro not even really relevant as long as White Horse just doesn't constantly keep his destroyers firing back or uh, uh, unable to fire. He's going to slowly win this out, kill off all these factories. Laissez Ferry with the chicken and this land force seemingly going to be a last ditch effort. I think White Horse has the intel and should should know what's about to be coming. It, it, it seems if it were me, I would be building a lot of Cerberus. Although maybe he has enough bricks in the area. He's building a lot of T1 engineers out of these T3 factories. Or he just has a lot of T1 engineers. Can't quite tell what's going on there. As these destroyers tear through the naval production of Laissez Ferry. He's going to be able to get naval supremacy over here. A lot of ASF now going down for White Horse to cruisers and frigates. And although he definitely has an air advantage. Whaler is now being produced. A large land fight breaking out right here in the center. This is really bad positioning though for White Horse. Once that chicken gets into range, that giant death ball rocket going to be able to deal massive, massive damage. Game not really able to process all of the uh, projectiles in in in, uh, in good time, having a little bit of lag, some frame rate drops here, but nevertheless, going to be going all right. As White Horse seemingly dissipating on the ground, doesn't have enough bricks to hold. The artillery is going to be able to help out 
It's, is it time? Has he decided yet if he's going to build PD? Could be even bring in the destroyers to try and help deal with this land force. The chicken, unlike all of the forces before this, the chicken has so much HP, it's taken almost no damage and gotten a rank of veterancy for it. It's going to be very difficult to deal with just with reinforcing units. Might be time to call those whalers to the front. White horse under tremendous pressure. Another chicken halfway done. The chicken assembly line is on line and going to be huge. The air force for white horse standing over those cruisers or flying over those cruisers for such a long time severely diminished his air power. He's going to have to use these newly built ASF to try and stop this air force from coming in and killing off his whalers, which are trying desperately to kill the chicken. The land HQ going to be going down momentarily. Do we have anything? T1 bombers at this point might even be an effective choice. The air fight, hard to tell who's winning it. Although the whaler is going down, seems like that would be just a loss for White Horse in general. What are you going to build? Mass Corsair is the order of the day. Does seem as though he's managed to wrestle air control. He's only going to get a couple of batches of Corsairs out before the inevitable loss of his air grid and air HQ. T1 bombers might be a good choice. He's losing so much. Trying to use the destroyers to hold this off. Trying to use the destroyers to get any kind of purchase he can. But after such a long time sitting on economic victory, White Horse is starting to lose everything. After losing that air grid, I can't imagine he has the power to run everything. He just doesn't, he's power stalling massively, down to only a production of 3,000. He has so many destroyers though, this might be a situation where Salem's walking on land would be a legitimate way to end the game. Second chicken is completed. Corsair is still desperately trying to kill off this chicken, but it's just not going to happen. With no air or land production, it's just a matter of time before White Horse succumbs to this large push. He's going to lose everything. He has to try and win with what he has on the field, whereas Laissez Ferry can still produce new units, can still make things happen. Time to start using these destroyers on land, I feel. He still has a shot in this game. It's just going to be a difficult a difficult ask for him to win it. Otham's pushing into the back line. His comm still hitting, sitting here very stealthy is that commander. Going to be difficult to deal with. The number of destroyers he, need, he has left to win the game with is 35. I'm sure he's trying to produce more. I'm sure that is on the docket and on the agenda. But without even air control, how will he be able to stop his opponent from just dealing with this mass destroyer play with gunships? Or even Nathas. A chicken going down to mass destroyer fire. Beautiful sight, seeing that chicken go down to these Salem's. But the Northern Chicken, with its five ranks of vet and 101, 123,000 mass killed, is going to be a threat that will be difficult to be deal dealt with. These Othams have torpedoes, and that is very significant, because the Othams can actually kill the Calm of White Horse. As White Horse comes on to land with the destroyers, he's trying to push back. He's killed off so much. I think that 
it is most certainly time that we do this. We do want to keep an eye on that. As the destroyers meander their way onto land, the Salem's trying desperately to, to achieve some form of victory. White Horse under a bit of threat. As I said, those Othams, they may not do it quickly, but they can kill off that commander. But with the torpedo bomber, bomber wave coming out from Laissez Ferry, he's found the commander. And I think that it's all over but the singing. Let's go ahead and grab a beautiful thumbnail. As we can watch on the minimap Laze Ferry going down. <laughs> it seems as though he's gonna try and walk out of the water. Maybe just walk somewhere deeper. And there come the torpedo bombers. And in the background we can see the calm explosion. It's gonna be happening right around here. Wow, still not exploded? Surprising, to say the least. I'd like to say thank you to the Patreons and to everybody watching these videos. I love all of the support you can give me. Please go down below, comment down below, tell me what you think of this cast tell me what you think I can improve on and what you think is good uh, and just in general let's have a discussion let's go talk go down in the comments talk about fun things Salem's surprisingly effective at killing uh, killing gunships on their with their AA uh, not necessarily when there's you know 30 or 40 gunships but when there's a couple Salem's able to shut them down you're gonna see a few of these bolthus falling out of the sky Still surprised that commander is still alive. There we go, he dies. In the background, see that explosion. Thank you to the Patreons, you all have been beautiful. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.